Welcome to Art Talk with April, Season 2. I'm April Harris of Inked April, located in Birmingham, Alabama. This season, we'll be talking with new artists and professional expert artists. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Talk with April. Today, we have the very talented Gloria Aiken, visual artist, located here in the Birmingham area. Um, How did you get started doing art, creating? Um, Well, I've been doing art for like as long as I can remember. Uh, My mom was an artist. She did like these amazing um, wood burnings. And so her and my dad really both like encouraged me to be creative and explore that. So I've been doing that since I was a kid. Wow. But um, I really started more professionally about eight years ago. Oh. And started taking myself more seriously and doing events and really trying to hone in on my style. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of that came from just meeting more local artists. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... You know, one of the things that I really love about your work is that I I kind of made art that was a little bit like yours at one point and was doing a lot of pen and ink. Yes. Is that mainly what you work in? That's my favorite medium for sure. Yeah. Um, I love doing all the little detail in the yeah. pieces. <laughs> Me too. I get crazy over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, really easy to get lost in a piece when you're doing all the tiny stuff. Mm. And that really helps uh, my anxiety and stuff because I can sit and just kind of focus in on something mm. for a while. Oh, yeah. It's, it's for me, it's kind of like meditative. I can just get stuck on it and to sort of zone out, you know, all the kids and the crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I noticed too, like you do add some color. Are you, what, what are you using to do that part of it? Actually on paper, I yeah. typically use watercolors. Oh, okay. um, and I do some acrylic painting as well. Yeah. But uh, a lot of my more colorful pieces lately have been digital work. Oh, okay. Okay. What are you using to do the digital work? Uh, I use the iPad Pro and Procreate. Okay. And okay. just the Apple Pencil. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I love Procreate. Procreate is so fun to use. <laughs> yes. And it it's made a huge difference in the quality of my work. Yeah. Um, being able to have things like stabilization controls and stuff, because I'm actually really shaky. Uh, I have tremors a lot in my hands. And so that was a challenge uh, for a while, for sure. And that helps a ton with that kind of stuff. I had never thought about that. Now, is that is that related to your autoimmune stuff? The tremor? It is. So I have fibromyalgia and I also have dysautonomia. And that kind of falls more under the dysautonomia situation. Um, because I get dizzy spells and, uh, basically what dysautonomia is, is a, uh, disorder of the central nervous system. Uh And so anything your body does automatically, um, can basically just malfunction at any point in time. So Uh most of the time, most of the time it's my blood pressure or, um, I'll get really cold when I shouldn't be or really hot when I shouldn't be, um, but sometimes the dizzy spells manifest and I end up really shaky. And so that'll put a real damper on like anything I'm trying to do artistically. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So a lot of the times when I'm having spells like that, I just only work digitally. Oh, Um, that's so awesome. because, Because it can stabilize everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I hadn't even thought about that. It's like one of the things that I really liked about trying digital was that I could undo, you know, I mean, like Mm -hmm. 
even like having little kids and being like in a room with them and they're of course coming up on me like can I have the recovery and they'll like knock my elbow and they'll be like oh, yeah <laughs> across <laughs> or like undo that could not happen with traditional at all it would be like okay I'm done <laughs> Right. Being able to draw the same line like 20 times is is really a plus because working traditionally, you can only erase so many times before the paper is ruined. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when when I start inking, that's it's impossible to go back. Yeah, that's one of those things that it's like. You know, are you using Micron or anything specific? Okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Um, I go through Microns like crazy. (laughs) Like like I have to buy them all the time. Yeah. (laughs) I get like the, what is it? There's like a sale. It'll be like $9.99 for a pack or something. Yes. It's like $20 or something like that. I'm like, I'm going to buy like three or four of these. (laughs) I've got a big drawer that just has microns in it that I've bought over the years, like on sale. And you're like, this one's kind of going out, but it's not out all the way. So we're going to keep it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always worried that my kids are going to get hold of them though. And like draw all over the walls or the furniture or something. Oh, (laughs) my kids have definitely done that. Yeah, and I stopped keeping permanent markers altogether because there were like pictures on the walls that just weren't ever going to go away. Oh man, <laughs> my, my um, three-year-old has totally attacked all of our living room furniture. Mm-hmm. And super great trick, okay, is rubbing alcohol and Q-tips, and you can rub it on there, and it'll rub it out. Hey, that's good to know for sure. I mean, like I, I was like, you know what? I, I Google, I kept Googling it. Like, how do I get rid of this ink? It's drawn everywhere. So I was like, hmm, let me check Pinterest. And of course, Pinterest had all these tips or whatever. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this is a bad idea to put rubbing alcohol all over my furniture, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> You're like, I might end up with a tie-dye couch, but that's Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can like mix some acrylics to match the color of <laughs> the other fabric, you know. I don't know. I'm crazy like that. Well, I'll <laughs> do something weird because I just have to try some way to fix whatever it is. No, I'm at the point where I've considered dying my couch. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So you're doing these pen and ink drawings, you do some acrylics. What about your subject matter? So you you do a lot of like fan art and nostalgic kind of stuff, right? I do typically do a ton of that in October because that's my favorite month. Okay. And um, everything about it's super nostalgic for me. So I do a lot of character work in yeah. October. And like as for the rest of the year, I kind of just draw from things I really enjoy So like a lot of nature, a lot of mythology, folklore, witchy things, you know, lots of, lots of spookiness. Um, That's kind of my vibe. I kind of keep that all year. But um, as far as like really where I get my inspiration from, a lot of my stuff is tied directly to the seasons. So Mm -hmm. the natural color palettes that come out during the year and um the imagery you see for each season really has a lot to do with what I choose to make creatively. Wow. You know, that, that wheel of the year turns and my inspiration sort of changes. Oh, that's really cool. I do most of my work in the fall though, because that's like my happy time. Yeah, (laughs) it is mine too. I get so inspired by a lot of the drawing challenges. Like I want to do all of them. Yes. It's hard to like, pick. I mean, of course, a lot of people do Inktober, but there's so many other ones that are really great. Right. I've done Inktober um, the past few years. Yeah. And it really helps you get into that habit of practicing every day. Oh, and you, you grow so much as an artist just in one month practicing every day like that. Yeah. Trying to put out like real pieces every day is really challenging. <laughs> isn't it oh my gosh I think it just you know 
for me personally, it, it kind of sets up that habit, you know, like, okay, I've got to draw something for this day, you know, like, do you, like, they kind of, um, put out the prompts a little early. Do you mm-hmm. ever like do it earlier, like work on some earlier before the October month or do you do it live every day? <laughs> well, I have tried to do it earlier <laughs> and I fail every year. I have to kind of be like last minute with things or I'm just not going to do them. So um, <laughs> most of the time I'm working either a day or two days ahead of the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same here. It's one of those things like every year I think, okay, I'm going to get started early. The second they put that thing out there, I'm going to start doing these drawings. Never happens. <laughs> no, I'll like, I'll make the list of my ideas like yeah. a month early, but I won't really start on it until it's time oh. <laughs> because I just, I'm not good at working ahead. Like it's got to be some pressure on me for me to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? I think there's like that deadline kind of looming and and you've already told people like, I'm going to do this Inktober thing and putting it out there every day is really pushes you to go further with it. (laughs) Right. Like I've had people in the past give me a commission with an open deadline and I'm like, please don't do that because I will never finish it. It will sit forever and it will never get done. (laughs) oh seriously don't even get me started on commissions like that (laughs) because I've had a few that I took probably in 2017 or 18 and then I got pregnant and then I had the pandemic and then I had a brain injury I I was diagnosed with lupus and it was just like I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I don't know when I'm going to get this done, you know? Right. And it was just heartbreaking to me because I felt like I would never have done that normally. Like it would have taken me longer, but it wouldn't have gone so long. Right. So have you been regularly um, taking commissions? Um, I take a lot of commissions for flyers. Yeah, I do a lot of digital work for flyers because that's something I can, you know, work on easily. Yeah. Um, But I don't take a lot of traditional commissions anymore. Maybe one or two a month. Maybe. Probably closer to one. Like, you know. Yeah. Depends on how I'm feeling because my health is not great with um, the chronic conditions. Uh, I have a hard time promising things to people. So, (laughs) yeah. Oh, man. And that it makes it's hard for me to turn people away and say no a lot of times but it's gotten to the point where my health is so on and off that I'm like I just I just can't like I I might really really want to but I can't right it's a struggle when I first got diagnosed I was really just getting into the swing of things like I was really just getting started And, um, it was like a real blow to your confidence when you're like, I can't work as much as I want to, but I've learned I have to set boundaries or I'm going to feel really bad. Working less is okay. And not doing as much as you want to is okay. And saying no is okay. Like you have (laughs) to be able to tell people no. Um, because ultimately if you're pushing it, um, your work is going to suffer. And it's not going to be as good as you want it to be for that person. And so it's better to tell them no than to give them like subpar work. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And I think that's one thing that was a huge lesson for me was to figure that out. Like, it's okay to say no. You don't have to do every single thing that comes your way. And you can turn people away and you can take care of yourself and rest when you know you need to rest. (laughs) Cause I'll be like fighting through some chronic fatigue, like nobody's business. (laughs) That's one of my biggest issues. Yeah, I'll just, you know, I wake up, I feel like I haven't slept, you know, there's like, it's like, I didn't get any rest at all. 
and I'm needing to sleep throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And so if I've promised something and I'm too tired to work on it, you know, it becomes an issue. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like for me personally, my experience is, I mean, those days when I wake up and I feel like I just cannot keep my eyes open and I feel like it's just like, I'm just exhausted. Like I'm hung over and haven't slept for days and cannot get up. It's just, you know, when it's happening, like you can tell a difference. It's not just your normal tired. Right. Like, okay. I'm having one of those days, you know? Yes. I, a lot of times wake up, it feels like there's an extra weight on my chest. Uh, yeah. And it's hard to physically move. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause um, you know, it affects my muscles and it affects, um, it's, it's a musculoskeletal disorder, fibromyalgia. So it affects so much of my body and it never presents the same way twice. And so, mm. you know, I never know what I'm waking up with. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were diagnosed and you realized, you know, the, okay, this is what, what's going on, right? What kept you making art, like not giving up on that? Well, it was something I've always loved. So that helped a lot. Um, yeah. But it's also something I can do with minimal exertion. Um a lot of the times I will work in my bed, like mm-hmm. studio, traditional studio setups don't work for me. I can't sit in a chair for extended hours to paint or draw. Yeah. So a lot of the times I just work in my bed and I can, you know, if it's a day where I can't get out of bed, I can work. Yeah. And, you know, it's something to keep me busy and keep me feeling useful, you know, <laughs> so it's actually a great tool for that. Yeah. Oh, man. It almost makes you think, well, for me personally, I would be like, okay, everyone with autoimmune, like you need to do this. You need to like do have some sort of creative hobby or something that you're you're able to still, you know, function and do. Right. Because I mean, otherwise it's just, it's, I don't know. I just feel like people shouldn't give up hope, you know? And like trying to do something because, I mean, I don't know about fibromyalgia, but I mean, can you, you can live with that for a while, right? It's a lifelong illness. It really, you don't like die from fibromyalgia. You can die from comorbidities or whatever, but it's a lifelong issue. Yeah. Yeah. The same with lupus. It's just like, you know, I can, I can live an, a normal existence for the most part, you know, um, and have the normal lifespan, but because of the other things that it causes to happen, you know, that can, that could make me go downhill or whatever. But of course I'm taking medicine, doing all that stuff too. So I'll probably be fine, but it's just one of those things that I have to wake up and deal with every single day, you know, and you're right. Right. You don't know what your day is going to look like. So I feel like art is a great way to, you know, do something like make something. And it's so, um fun to do and when you really love it oh you can just put your heart into it and everything and um right there's like that catharsis you get from it you know it's really therapeutic to be able to sit and create something when maybe you can't do anything else that day yeah 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 are you inspired by anybody in particular well like who are your favorite artists my all-time favorite would be Alphonse Mucha. Oh, um, I don't know if you're super familiar, but I love just the colors and the subject matter and just everything about it really speaks to me. And then uh, for more like contemporary artists, I really enjoy John Baisley and Richie Beckett. Okay. I'm actually not, I don't think I'm familiar with them so what kind of art do they make 
Um, well, they both work with a lot of musicians. Uh, John Baisley is actually in a band called Baroness. He's the front man of Baroness and he does all their album covers. And it's actually like a modern mucha to me, oh. um, the stuff that, that he does. Yes. A lot of women, a lot of nature. It's like watercolor. And then uh, Richie Beckett, he does a lot of really detailed line work which obviously is my thing. So, yes. But you'll see his, you'll see his work promoting a lot of bands, uh, a lot of big bands, you know, so it's, it's just uh, something to like aspire to. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That sounds like it's right up my alley. Like I've got to look them up. For sure. Um, and you have actually done some like band designs or you're doing like, your your flyers or posters but then are you doing cover art as well uh I've done some for some local bands um yeah. and then I of course for my husband's um music project Spirit Guardian yeah. I do all of his covers and you know CD case designs and stickers and t-shirts and all of that oh that's so fun I just always thought that that was really cool you know to like do because to be are you like inspired by music you know like the music that you're listening to or whatever I am a lot of the a lot of the times if I'm working on a album cover I will just like loop the music over and over and over and listen to that while I work on it because it really helps you get the vibe together for what you're working on yeah absolutely I could definitely see how that would help and that would be um just really inspiring and you can like pull off like you know subject matter and that kind of thing from a song or some lyrics you know that that comes up so that's really fun when I work with my husband, it's really easy because he has vision for what he's doing. He like knows exactly what he's after. Yeah. So, um, but he'll always say, well, you took that and you made it into something bigger or whatever. But, you know, it's it's fun to work with him on that. And we've both gotten, um, you know, really into the scene here in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. We set up at a lot of punk shows and metal shows. and um, you know, he plays occasionally, but he's doing reviews and he's starting a blog and like, it's, you know, a whole thing. Wow. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Let's talk about the punk rock scene that's coming on. I mean, when do you think that that really started about, or when did you get involved or start getting involved in that? Well, I've only been in Birmingham for four years, so I'm sure there's much 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 before that but um currently brian burks is really Mm -hmm. putting together this wonderful scene it's mostly at true story brewing Mm -hmm. and we set up on first friday punk nights uh second saturday metal nights and the punk rock art shows and um see just these fantastic bands come through like so much great talent it's um it's a great place to be and there's always just a bunch of different artists and so you're getting the art you're getting the music and oh that's so awesome just great people it's uh yeah it's awesome oh I love it and you're you've participated in like the punk rock um markets at Cahaba what else are you doing around the area um i have a shelf at birmingham oddities oh yeah Um, yeah. there's tons of local art there i mean you go in to like refill your shelf and find so many amazing things (laughs) and they've got the whole side of the store that's art and then the whole side that's oddities with just crazy stuff you couldn't imagine you could buy at a store and so (laughs) it's just so much fun to go in there oh believe it or not I have never been isn't that crazy you've got to go got to go I feel like I feel like once I go I'll be like spending all my money there because <laughs> I, I, I know that I would love it <laughs> it's true because it's just there's so much to choose from 
there's such a variety there because you hear oddities and you're like, it's all going to be super weird. And <laughs> a lot of it is. A lot of it is super weird. But <laughs> a lot of it is weird but wonderful. And you just have to go look through everything. Oh, man. I've got I've got to do that. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. But how did you get? OK, so did you like contact Brian and and say, hey, can I, you know, put some of my art here? Or how did that go? I did. So we moved up from Jacksonville, Florida, and mm -hmm. I had gotten into the art scene down there. I was really starting to like have you know, gallery shows and go set up at art walks and have a lot of, you know, fun stuff going on. And we moved here and I was like, I have no idea. I have yeah. no idea what's happening. And some of the first shows I saw promoted were his shows. And so I just messaged him and said, Hey, this is what I've been doing down here. I would like to do this up here. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and he's just super welcoming and puts on the best shows. And so it was, just the perfect fit for me yeah. because I really found my niche because I do, you know, some spooky witchy things and that doesn't always go over the best at yeah. like, you know, <laughs> um, normal art shows. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, I feel the same way. I'm like, and I don't, I, I mean, I know that your parents were artistic but mine were not. And so when I'm like making these like skull paintings and stuff like that, they're like, April, are you okay? Like, are, are you all right? <laughs> like, I'm fine. I think uh, it's just cool. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, my parents are two hippies. Okay. So they're not like, my mom was always really supportive and my dad was always kind of like, that's a little weird, Gloria. Maybe we should do something a little nicer. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but he is uh, still super supportive to this day. He loves to like see what I'm working on. But uh, my mom passed away a couple years ago, but oh, you, can, you can still see her influence in everything I do. Yeah. Like uh, anytime I draw a mushroom, I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah. Uh, Cause like I said, two hippies. And so yeah. like a lot of, a lot of that kind of stuff that gets into my art, the, the hippie stuff and retro stuff that I really enjoy comes from them. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so awesome. And I think, you know, like what you were saying too, about like the, the normal shows and the normal art or whatever. I mean, like, I think specific, I don't know about Florida. Florida may be a little bit more out there, but in Alabama, it's like, you know, you see the same things over and over and over again. If you go to just like your standard art show, you know, or your festival or whatever, it's like fall festival. And it's just going to be some of the same things, which, you know, can be very beautiful and interesting. But then you wonder like, okay, where does my art, fit in here you know like yes. if you were to set up a booth at one of these places are they going to be like scared of you, <laughs> you know? um, like, yes they will be like <laughs> <laughs> they have been oh really um, really have you had that I've, experience I've had a couple shows I mean particularly in Florida I had some shows that I did where I would set up at a fall festival or at a coffee shop yeah. And people would be like, this isn't coastal art. What are you doing? It, but, um, you know, where are the uh, beach paintings? <laughs> right. Like, do you have anything beachy? I'm like, I have one seahorse. <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but since I've been here, I've really just gone towards the shows. I know that people will appreciate yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one of the tricky things is like finding your community, like finding the right place to be for your work and finding the right people to come and see your work, you know, and get involved in showing at some place that matches you, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've been very lucky to find that. And just communities of super supportive people. Mm. Um, 
that's one of the biggest things that's helped me grow and have confidence to be able to do what I do is just finding these people who are so supportive and want you to succeed at what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I feel like the punk rock thing is kind of branching out around lots of areas, right? Like, have you done anything that was like out of state? I don't really travel out of state because I got the two kids and like a dog and it like becomes a whole thing. I don't drive personally, so I can't just like take off and go by myself. Yeah. Um, I really rely on my husband to drive me around. So it has to be like the whole family goes and does the thing. So, which is great for us. We've really loved having the kids out at shows and, you know, spending time together as a family doing this as an art business has been wonderful. Um, He's a great support system too. If I have a show where I can't personally go because I'm sick that day, um, you know, he'll take everything and go set up at the show. Wow. And, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's been amazing to have that kind of support. Yeah. And not everybody's like that. Like there are some people who probably wouldn't do that, you know, so that's awesome. Right. To that. Um, back to the original question, though. Um, yes, the punk rock scene is spreading out. I've seen that there's like a punk rock flea market in Nashville and there's one in Atlanta. Mm. And I do know artists that have gone to those shows and it's been great for everyone as far as I've heard. Yeah, I love it. I just think it's awesome. And, you know, like that one show that that you came up and talked to me, that was my very first show like ever. Oh, and- wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like. You know, I brought my husband. I'm like, you're going to have to talk to people, you know, like, I don't know that I can do it. (laughs) So like, what was your experience when you first, like your first show, when you went out and did that kind Uh, of thing? It's it's actually kind of funny. When my husband is there, he will do all of the talking. He'll be like, she's the artist. I'm like, hey. And then he does all the talking because (laughs) I don't talk to people that much. Um. (laughs) And I noticed that sort of at the first show, I was like, when he's here, I cannot talk to anyone because I'll just let him do it. Yeah. I'll just be like, yeah, he can just talk. Um, so when I set up by myself, I actually will talk to people, but if he's there, I'm just going to let him do it. So <laughs> that's what I, I noticed first. Um, when I'm by myself, I'm forced to talk to people yeah. so I can actually carry a conversation and, you know, tell them about what I'm doing. But I do rely on him a lot to sort of carry the conversations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know that I can do this by myself. <laughs> it's just, you know, I think taking that first step to like set up a table and get all the things that you want to have and make sure you, you know, have a price for everything and you know, like, okay, this is how much my stickers are. This are, this is how much my, you know, five by sevens are, whatever it is. And, and remembering and being able to just like explain, you know, what were you inspired by? Why did you make this? And I actually got some of those questions at that show. And I was like, (gasps) Uh, I was like, I don't know. (laughs) So I'll freeze up. I'll freeze up a lot. Like I'll have super detailed reasons why I picked something sometimes. And sometimes I just did it because I liked it or I liked the way it looked. And there's not anything behind it besides it looks good. And so (laughs) it's a, somebody will ask me and I'm like, I don't know. I liked it. So I did it. Like that's about (laughs) the the detail you get. And then there'll be pieces like uh, this one up here that's behind me with the red flowers. You can kind of see it where like every single little piece I was thinking about why I was putting it in there. So you asked me about that one. I got a lot to say. And you asked me about another one and there's just I just like the way it looked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was unfortunate for me. It was one of those that I was just like, oh, let me throw this together. You know, that was kind of nice. I didn't really think really hard about it. 
<laughs> so I was just I was just really thrown off and uh, I felt so embarrassed but it was one of those things you 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 put it in a really good way <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm I might steal that from you <laughs> Like, I just like the way it looked. And most people are pretty satisfied with that answer. They're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Gloria, for talking to me today. I have really enjoyed it. I love everything you're doing. I just appreciate you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to me. And um, I really enjoyed it. Well, I did too. Thank fun. you for having me on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Art Talk with April. For more information on this episode, join the Facebook group, The Art Lounge. Please subscribe and share. See you next Tuesday. Hope you have a great week.